Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our attendees. If you are listening in live, hello and welcome. And if you're listening to and viewing a recording, hello and welcome to you as well. Thank you all for joining us today. We at Impetus Technologies are delighted to bring a discussion on the real-world applications of real-time streaming analytics. So this webinar is being delivered as our continued effort to create leapfrogging advantages for our customers and to advance the marketplace of cutting-edge big data solutions. So a brief introduction of the speakers today. My name is Anand Venugopal. I'm the Senior Director of Business Development for our big data solutions practice here at Impetus. I'm also playing the role of the product management um, head for a recently launched stream analytics platform. I have a techno business background in, in telecom, interactive entertainment, and the high-tech industry verticals. <clears throat> I've been at Impetus since the last uh, close to five years now, um, having a wonderful opportunity to contribute to this whole uh, growth of our big data business here and engaging with all of you, um, our customers. We have Puneet Shah, my partner in crime here, uh, who's a product architect. Um, we've been working together with a lot of our customers on streaming analytics. We've been working with IT and line of business executives in large enterprises and having them understand and extract the enormous value embedded in their static and in-motion data assets. I also, first of all, before getting in, I want to welcome specifically two sets of people, right? Those of you who have been in our previous webinars, in the beginning of the year, we did real-time streaming analytics, business value use cases, and architectural considerations. And uh, more recently, we did this webinar on uh, real-time streaming analytics for enterprises based on Apache Storm, where we also did a full demo of our product. And uh, the demo of our product and these two webinars are available on streamanalytics.com, our website. I want to also welcome uh, any of you and those of you who are joining Impetus or a Stream Analytics webinar for the first time. Thank you for, for spending your, your time here with us and um, and, and we're giving, you, giving your time and attention to us, right? So in terms of agenda, we have a these four broad areas, rapid growth and demand for real-time analytics in general, the background, a quick overview of Stream Analytics, and getting right into the case studies and then Q&A. So for those of you who don't know us, we are a big data solutions and services company. We're unique in our depth and expertise as ratified by our customers. We've been implementing big data solutions for large enterprises since 2008. We've been in business since 96, building large-scale mission-critical platforms. Uh, Puneet and I are joining you from our Los Gatos, California headquarters, and we have large offshore operations in three cities in India. Um, our specialization is, of course, in big data technology, data science, and business analytics. And um, along the journey, we have been building a lot of cutting-edge cool products and, and IP uh, in, the, in the big data area. One of them is this product called Stream Analytics, uh, which we use to accelerate uh, solution development for our customers. It is a licensable commercial product. So quickly checking into the drivers of real-time streaming analytics as we, as we see it, clearly the Internet of Things industry is booming. Um, we see an uptake from folks who have you know, fleet operations and logistics. So they're looking at tracking their, their driver's behavior in real time, finding out how or why a particular driver is braking too hard, et cetera, things like that. Uh, the security, both physical security and IT security, are huge consumers of um, real-time streaming analytics. <laughs> and we're, we're also seeing our customers coming to us with, um, you know, direct feeds from mobile mobile devices, including from the apps or from the device itself, in terms of location, what you're doing on your app, etc. The oil and gas and, and utility industry is obviously rich with uh, continuous sensor data, uh, oil wells, uh, drilling. For example, that's a manufacturing type uh, use case, similar to many other use cases in the healthcare, um, the healthcare space, in the telecom space, et cetera. So all of these industries are now waking up to the power of real-time streaming analytics and, and really bringing forth a, in bringing this technology in-house and adding that as an integral part of the enterprise architecture, not to mention IT operations and data center as well. So 
One of the other key drivers from a business standpoint is you and I, the customer, right? We expect to be served and to be served well. And when we're not, we get, we get really upset. We, we make demands on these service providers and vendors of ours to understand us and serve us according to our context, right? We are always communicating on multiple channels by what we're doing, right? We're swiping our credit cards, we're, we're doing social media updates, we're, we're calling into call centers. All of that is multi-channel engagement in real time. And a business that takes all of those communications, correlates that, builds an accurate real-time context of the customer, and provides context-sensitive customer service is, will win the game and will get happy customers, loyalty, revenue, and profits grow. So that people are clearly waking up to as well. So customer experience is, is, uh, is another huge driver of real-time streaming analytics. So broadly, when you look at, we're looking at all those use cases, um, they are business operations which are integral, uh, integrally real-time. So you can't have credit card fraud uh, not be real-time, right? Uh, similarly, there are operational use cases like that, and there's business analytics use cases where people are doing batch and looking at data and BI up to about yesterday or many, many hours ago. They're not able to see what's happening right now. So that's the whole area of business analytics. And going deeper into that piece, one of the things that is a problem with the batch analytics in general is that the batch workflow is too slow. Often, I mean, we've heard extreme cases like, you know, a customer comes into the bank and, you know, he says that he wants a loan or something like that, um, and it takes three weeks to turn back with, with an offer or with any kind of meaningful response to, to this customer because the internal processes are so slow. So at best, you know, you're able to see things up to, um, up to probably the previous night, typically in large enterprises. So we completely missed the window of, of the recent transactions and the recent context of the customer, and that's the, the gap. Uh, that the entire batch workflow creates, right? So one of the key benefits of real-time streaming in your enterprise architecture is to have that gap be closed out. So what the, what, what the business needs and decision makers need is a blended view of the historical part of the information as well as the recent data. And Hadoop and batch analytics works great for the historical part as far as big data is concerned, and technologies like Apache Storm work perfectly well in, in the real-time window with total visibility and sensitivity to each incoming event. So that's what we, we enable here at, um, at Impetus with our stream analytics product. And again, deep, getting deeper into this piece, this is, of course, many of you might recognize the Lambda architecture that Nathan Mars has written a lot about. And uh, this picture is you know, direct manifestation from, from that uh, literature where the incoming data is now forked into the usual batch processing pipeline, but you're also adding a, a speed layer for the fast data part to process all the incoming transactions and events as they come into the enterprise. So you run computations on them, you do some basic pre-processing, you do alerting, you run predictive analytics, you can do a variety of different things with that incoming data, and you can create a, a nice hybrid merging layer where you can where you can blend the real-time views and the batch views together to give an accurate up to the second view to your customer. So we, we are, in fact, doing this with a number of use cases we'll, we'll talk about today. So with that, we'll, we'll move on to the next portion, which is a quick introduction to stream analytics. So the stream analytics platform is an open source based enterprise class platform for streaming analytics. And it looks like this in terms of overall schematic um, overview. It is a software platform that enables enterprises to analyze and respond to events in real time at big data scale. It is designed to rapidly build and deploy streaming analytics for any industry vertical or any data format, any use case. Um, we're seeing questions also coming along, so thank you for, for that. We will address Q&A at, at the end of the presentation. So the schematic here shows a data of a varying number of types moving into the system, uh, XML, JSON, CSV, et cetera, entering the stream processing cluster where you can do your initial parsing, um, pre-processing, analytics, 
um, counting, arithmetic, you know, all of that statistical uh, calculations you want to do in real time, and you want you want to store the data, index it, and also surface it to to a real time uh, web UI dashboards and show alerts in that. So all of that is possible with this platform. And um, here is the block diagram of of the platform itself. Um, there's a cluster provisioning tool which enables you to quickly, you know, visually provision the whole thing. There's Kafka and RabbitMQ that support it as message queues uh, out of the box. The message queues will bring in the data at high speeds into, into Storm, where our platform will, will receive the data and expose it to all of the different applications that you can build. So the green circles are custom applications that you would build rapidly on, on the Stream Analytics platform. The application logic has uh, access to ready-made APIs and functionality that we have built in, which is one for the WebSocket to, to visualize uh, the data and the alerts. You have access to a distributed cache for, for keeping state across the cluster. Um, you have convenient APIs to also store the data into NoSQL, into HBase, um, or Cassandra, um, or Elasticsearch. So you can also do offline data access if, as, as needed. The beauty of this is it's all open source. You can directly access the systems that, that we are exposing for you. So um, that's a quick overview of the system. We'd be happy to answer questions also in, in greater depth, uh, and all of this is available on our website, so I don't want to dwell too much on this. So coming to the core of, the, of today's agenda, that is the real case studies of what this platform enables and, and what are people really doing, right? So here's our first case. It's an intelligence um, solutions company, um, which is plays in the telecom slash um, uh, intelligence uh, world, where they 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 provide the ability for governments and and intelligence agencies to intercept communications in real time. And what kind of communications? These are largely non-voice communications. They can of course also tap voice, um, and. The non-voice communications are a variety, right? Email, chats, peer-to-peer uh, -peer file transfers, all of that. And uh, they really want to, you know, uh, get get a view into what the bad guys are saying to each other. Essentially, that's what they want to do. And so the nature of the application is that uh, they want to classify the streaming text in real time based on topics. So on, on the right side of the screen, you can see a sample of the different topics we, we need to identify in the content and, and label that accordingly. Um, we have sentiment analysis that also needs to happen in real time. The, the volume is about 250 million messages coming in every day, and the nature of messages are web logs, chats, emails, and tweets. And there was a very high degree of accuracy required uh, for the classification part, which is 99.99%. So you, you had a predictive model that, that needed to score all of this in real time, right? And the sentiment analysis piece needed to be about 80% um, accurate. So. Uh, we were getting in multiple languages, but we only had to deal with English and Arabic and, and um, dispose of everything else. Um, the data was very raw, so that we were, in fact, even getting web scripts, right, JavaScript files, CSS files, which we needed to understand was not the, the payload, and um, it needed to be categorized as a script and then disposed of. And all of these messages coming in every every second needed to be ingested, stored, indexed, and available for query. So that would be petabytes of data totally, and we had to create the metadata separately, index it, um, and this was uh, sometimes also raw binary data. So uh, the query SLA for any for cold data, which is any four-hour window in the history, had to be four to five seconds, and we had to do Etsy compliant encryption. Etsy is a European standards body. So that was the, the requirements, and the way we did this um, was that there was an initial contract, you know, content extraction and pre-processing uh, stage. So in order to maintain latency, essentially we split the task into multiple subtasks, right, uh, and parallelize each of these tasks. So the initial tokenization extra is done um, based on delimiters, elimination of all stop words which are non-contributory in nature, and um, we then have a removal of uh, non-ASCII, non-UTF uh, characters. After the pre-processing is done, the, the predictive models that we built offline are scoring all of this data in real time um, for, for the classification algorithm and for the sentiment algorithm. So that's what happened in real time. So we were doing 20 categories, like I said. We used, for the classification piece, we used semantic similarity approach uh, based on matrix decomposition. And uh, our data science uh, group essentially came up with, uh, with algorithms for this. 
the the mechanism was language independent so it was um, it was powerful and for the class of, for the sentiment analysis piece we used a unsupervised model based on a lexicon approach where we're looking at the paragraph or or text and we're identifying all the adjectives having a pre uh, you know, pre pre prepared dictionary of uh, the polarities associated with it, so positive, negative, neutral. Um, the surrounding words could either amplify or negate um, the initial polarity. So we could also do feature extraction. So if you wrote a, a little um, hotel review, right, for example, we can actually take that piece and say you, you said something positive about the location, you said something negative about the food, and uh, we've built that IP to do that again in, in real time. So um, in terms of learnings in this particular case, um, the language independent technique worked very well. Uh, we we did about a training on uh, 50, 60 documents per topic uh, on, in, the, in the supervised model, and that was sufficient to provide the accuracy we needed. Um, and Arabic content was not tokenizable uh, sometimes, and that did not hamper accuracy. We did use a language expert to actually test the model uh, to ensure that it was accurate. In terms of architecture, the stream analytics uh, architecture was just perfect. It lent itself well to, the, to parallelization and scale out. The, the customer got what they needed in terms of scale. Um, the event size throughput was, of course, a, a nice learning here. This was one of our initial deployments um, where, you know, obviously the larger the size, the size of the event, the overall throughput of the system comes down, so you've got to compensate if you, if you need to um, um, keep a very high level of throughput. So that was this, uh, the first use case. We're getting into, into the second one now. Um, and again, there, there are a number of use cases. I'm just trying to go over as many as we can here. So the second customer uh, where we use Stream Analytics to solve real-time problems was a, a hosted contact center solution provider. So in this case, this is a generic diagram, not specific to the customer, obviously. It's a, it's a generic uh, diagram of how a hosted contact center solution looks like. So you, you have the contact center, contact center solution infrastructure, the platform, right in the middle on the top, right? And you have your incoming callers, that's you and I, calling into, let's say, a Dell to fix our laptop or calling, you know, 1-800 Best Buy, whatever we are calling. And the, the contact center solution is, is actually receiving that call and sending it, routing it to the right agent, depending on who the tenant is. So in any given call, there's a there's an incoming call ID and there's an outgoing call ID for a particular media server A. You could you could hit one media server, you can get to an agent and then you hit another media server. So this is globally distributed network with uh, media servers and infrastructure across the globe over an IP network, right? Uh, Puneet and his team are working with uh, with this customer and they they really discovered the, what the issues were. So you're calling in. You, you get to an IVR, um, and then the IVR, you punch a couple of buttons, and then you, you get to a queue. Um, and, and then you get to an agent, right? And you could be in that whole loop uh, for, a, for a long period of time. And obviously, the, the, the customer does not want you uh, to, to be stuck in that kind of situation for a long time. Right? They want to ensure that you, you, you have a positive experience. You get going with, your, with whatever you want to do ASAP. The other piece is when something goes wrong in this whole in this whole system, let's say there was a sudden interruption of the call, uh, they're now looking at this type of a network architecture. The technical support team is logging into box one, box two, box three, box four, separately taking all of these logs, trying to piece together what exactly happened on that call and why did it drop. So one call could hit four or five different boxes, and the support team is logging into all of these and doing manual correlation and figuring out what happened so that they can serve the customer and fix the issue. So clearly there was automation that, need, that was needed. Clearly there was real-time correlation that was needed. So here's the problem statement. Um, on a reactive basis, the customer was looking at what happened to my call. So diagnostics needed to be done easier and faster. On a proactive basis, the business team wanted to understand uh, dominant call path. So where in the IVR system are customers spending their time and um, lowering the entire queue time. So, uh, and then, of course, pro proactive analysis also included abandoned call analysis. The, the nature of the solution had multiple parts. One is log aggregation. And um, 
auto correlation of, of logs in real time, finding the IVR dominant path, like I said, and also creating a real time dashboard with the counters and alerts and all of that, right? Um, we were able to do all of this uh, rapidly and, and show the customer what they what they needed. Um, here's the view of the, the nature of the view we gave to the customer, right? So if you put all the pieces of the call together in real time and and show them that this is what happened in that call, right? They, you give them a search a string and they hit, a, they hit go and you can zoom right into a call and look at what happened to that, each of the pieces in that call experience. So you can now see each of the pieces of that call and the customer support team could now analyze and really understand where they were coming from. They didn't need to go into each of those boxes and do co manual correlation. The next thing they were they could see is this dominant uh, IVR call path analysis, right? Each of those numbers in those circles were are the number of calls that went through a particular path uh, in the IVR. So the business team can now look at where customers are spending their time. Again, all of this is happening in real time. They're able to query up to the last second of data, and they're able to get this kind of visualization. So it really pleased uh, this particular customer. They, they, they had a whole day and night kind of shift in their, in their experience, and uh, they're delighted. So we were able to solve their key problems of call, you know, call log aggregation, indexing and search, um, real-time call path, and, and dominant path analytics, right? And after this was solved, they're now looking at the next stage, which is sentiment analysis in real-time, um, audio to text, and then sentiment analysis on, on the transcript, and then real, rich, more, more richer real-time dashboarding. Um, I'm proud to say that my, our team here, Puneet, and, and his um, professional services organization has been helping this customer out. One of the key things we noticed was uh, the customer was, had, had a great concern about, you know, uh, I'm, will this really add value on top of my, let's say, ELK stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, or anything um, that they do on their own. They, they really saw ROI on this platform on day two. On, on day two of our installation, after our installation, they were able to ingest all of their logs, see it, index it, uh, and uh, get tremendous acceleration compared to doing it all by themselves. Right, Puni, do you want to add anything on this? Sure. So, not just the indexing and the searching capabilities, but also ability to generate alerts in real time. So, as the events or the log events are coming in, the platform was able to generate alerts. It was able to stream the alert information in all these individual events to a web UI via web sockets. So, the customer was definitely delighted that on day two, his entire log aggregation problem was solved where he could see, scan, and see all these different alerts and search patterns. Live. Awesome. So that was the, the second uh, case study. Moving on to the third one here. Uh, it's a digital content provider where this customer, again, here is in the, in the Bay Area in California. Uh, they're a provider of scholarly articles, journals, and educational material on the web, and their customers are institutional subscribers, uh, such as other universities and other institutions, and which thousands with thousands of each users each, right? And this Case can be even looked at as, you know, for as identical to e-commerce or uh, advertising type use cases. So customers really wanted to see what what's happening in, in real time, as opposed to again batch, right? That whole story of batch and speeding up batch to, to get a more real-time window was, was applicable here. So when we went and, and talked to them about our product, they said you came at the right time. Uh, we were just about getting getting started with uh, real-time initiative here. And we want to see visibility of and analytics of customer behavior pattern, right? So um, here's the detail. So there's ten, tens of millions of events per day coming in. Uh, it's click stream data, complex XML events. They needed to do real time ETL, which is take all of that data as it's being generated in the pipe, uh, flatten out the XML, uh, create a nice clean structure, filter the data. They had a they had a proprietary filter they wanted to apply in in types of traffic or data they wanted to see types of traffic they were not interested in. Um, so we put a filtering module right there in the, in the and pre-processing module first in the pipeline, and and then the, the core logic of clickstream analytics um, was put in with double-click detection and uh, a bot detection of the two proprietary engines they wanted to deploy in real time. So they wanted to understand if any customer clicks a particular link twice, which indicates a, a latency on the first click. 
So they wanted to see that event. They also wanted to understand whether this particular entity that was on their website was a bot or a real human being. So they had a proprietary algorithm that would determine that as well. And we put all of that on the real-time pipeline. And the other business case was um, upsell, cross-sell recommendations. So you click on something, they, they wanted to give their customers a recommendation on the next article they may be interested in. So here's a view of an actual screen on our product um, that is being used in, in this particular case. You can, in the course of using our product, you can actually drag and drop uh, elements like this and build your own complete real-time flow and here you can see that the flow is starting with a Kafka spout, um, and then you get into a filter, like I said, and then the, the two proprietary engines of bot detection and double-click detection. The beauty of this is you can parallelize each of these into as many parallel instances you want on Storm, and, and you can build in sequential or parallel uh, tasks. As you can see here, the last piece is forked into writing into HDFS or Hadoop, and the, the parallel fork goes into the recommendation engine platform and out into the into the streaming piece, which which could be streaming back into a UI or streaming into back into the queue for downstream applications. So this is an example of the the actual pipeline we built for this customer uh, that processed their data in real time. And uh, there were four different stakeholders. There was other um, IT analytics also that we did here, um, and I'm I'm going to come to that down in the in the last case study. So. Um, that was that was this customer again. It, you can use, think of this if you have any clickstream analytics use cases. If you wanted to see what people are doing on your website in real time from a marketing perspective, all of that is is an identical use case to this. Going um, going into our uh, last more detailed use case here, it is a web application SLA monitoring type of use case. Some those of you who are in IT and you're looking at uh, Splunk type use cases can can pay attention here. Um, this is a case where a healthcare insurance exchange platform company that is providing its technology to healthcare uh, carriers or, um, or state governments themselves. So when you and I enroll do, when this, during this open enrollment phase into, uh, into the insurance uh, companies, the, the server response time to the front-end applications or to the consumer is obviously the key metric. We want interactivity. We don't want what happened on the federal Obamacare website, right? Um, so this customer started getting complaints from some key customers um, on potential uh, slowdown and, and the downtime in, in, their, um, in their web applications, which was, a, which, was a, which was a big issue for them because it's a, it's a huge potential revenue impact for their customer and hence for them. Um, so this triggered the need for aggressively immediately putting in real-time monitoring and alerting on, on their web application. And um, we, we put that entire infrastructure together. They needed to do three things. So they, they had to submit a, a server response time report uh, on a daily basis and track that over minutes uh, all, all through. And uh, that reporting SLA needed to be about four seconds. Um, if, if there was any um, breach in that four-second threshold, they needed to record that event and they need to continuously count uh, the, the events and, and provide a full real-time dashboard for that, along with real-time alerts and uh, a batch reporting. So all of that was, was possible in, uh, in the pipeline that we put together for them, and that pipeline looks like this. So we, we can install our stream analytics agent on the remote nodes. We, we built out that agent. We, you can configure that agent in, uh, in real time. And it will pick up the logs coming in in real time and stream it into the Kafka queue. We'll collect it into into the in the in the centralized uh, uh, server where we'll collect at the other end of the Kafka queue. We'll collect all of those SLA events um, and and then do processing on them. So the processing would be the SLA the alerting um, in case the SLA was breached and real time counting of various types, uh, you know, aggregates and um, averages, uh, min max. All of those types of counting in real time can be done. And we finally streamed it into um, Elasticsearch, um, which is one of our indexing stores that we use, and uh, doing a report generation like I showed you in the previous screen. So this was, again, uh, a very kind of urgent solution that the customer needed to have uh, operational. And what we're finding is with this platform, we're able to uh, solve these kind of real-time cases with both real-time and uh, batch view uh, that, that people need in, in the matter of weeks, in the matter of two to three weeks, we're up and running. 
uh, what they thought was going to be very, very hard to do, what they thought was going to be would take long is uh, is taking dramatically less time, and they're they're uh, really experiencing the power of uh, time to market with, uh, with this platform. So many other types of use cases are in in process at this point. Um, we're working with the tier one healthcare insurance carrier. They're looking at fraudulent claims in real time. They work, they're looking at a variety of different use cases. Uh, we're working with a credit card brand, and uh, this was also a bank. Uh, again, they're, uh, they're looking at uh, tapping the college graduates um, as soon as they you know, get, get a job, and their, change, their status changes, their income level increases. They want to track that event and, and start um, marketing them differently. Uh, they're also looking at fraud. Um, there's an interesting endpoint security application company that's using our engine in the back end as their on-prem and, and SaaS platform. And uh, we're also working with mobile field devices, um, such as, for example, you know, what's carried by a UPS or a FedEx delivery person when you come to your door, they have this mobile device, which obviously should not be running out of battery, right? So they're looking at predicting battery outage or any kind of faults in advance on their trucks and all of their mobile devices. Uh, working with them on that use case. So there's, a, there's plenty of different interesting use cases that are being enabled uh, by this open source-based powerful platform that we have called Stream Analytics. And um, that was an overview that we wanted to provide you today. Uh, for all those use cases that we're working on and have been enabled successfully uh, with our platform. So we are getting to the point where we can open it for Q&A. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for listening in. And first of all, let me tell you about the poll results. So feel free to think about your questions and, and uh, put in your questions into into the window. So 47% um, were early stage, 26% were evaluating, and about 8% in production. Uh, that's great. So for those of you who are evaluating um, streaming technologies, hopefully this was useful and you could see what the power of a Apache Storm and Kafka and HPS Cassandra open source based stack that provides you with an enterprise grade uh, platform built on top of that. So here are some questions. Um, you know, first question we had was uh, how is Storm different from from uh, Kundera? Um, so Kundera is an, again an offering. Those of you who don't know from our side, it's a um, NoSQL abstraction layer. So Kundera is really an API that you would use on top of application on top of uh, NoSQL databases. Uh, to to write your application code, uh, object-oriented application code on NoSQL databases, and that's a completely different thing from Storm, which is a real-time stream processing engine. So uh, the two are have you know have totally different um, functions. That was one answer, one question. Um, Somebody is asking about whether you can whether we can send them the slide deck after the presentation. Uh, Brian Clark. Uh, we, we can, we'll probably put up, record this whole thing and um, put it up on our website just like all our other webinars. You can actually get access to that and see the whole webinar live played back whenever, whenever you need. How does the licensing work is, is a question that's coming through. Um, the, the licensing for this platform works largely uh, per core, and um, we can engage with you on a on a case to case basis to understand what what the pricing is and how this scales up. This this platform really scales uh, really well, in a, elastically, linearly, and uh, we can do a million events per second uh, in real time with uh, eight uh, nodes of 32 cores each, and that's uh, a lot of processing. So a million events per second um, with um, eight nodes of 32 cores each. That's the level of scale you can get. And if you add uh, a storage and indexing overhead, that comes to about hundreds of thousands of events per second. So uh, there's a question on what uh, statistical tools uh, we use. We we have integrated a CEP engine into the product. Um, we can do a variety of different um, statistical processing with that. We can build custom logic. We can we can also do um, predictive analytics with PMML. So you can literally build your um, predictive analytics algorithms, predictive you know co-correlation regression, all of those types of algorithms um, to to do scoring. Like we we showed you a case where we do natural language processing in real time. Um, so all of that type of analytics is now possible on real time data with with this platform. 
got a question here um, on whether InfoSphere Streams is considered one of our competing products. I would say yes, um, except that uh, the cost factor would be dramatically higher compared to what we offer. We offer an open source based platform, which is obviously much, much cheaper than, than working with IBM Streams. In fact, um, one of our large banking customers is looking to move move from uh, streams to, to uh, open source based technology based on our platform. So any of you who think that this could really help you, uh, feel free to definitely uh, touch base with us and send us the send us your information. We got um, your update, uh, Ravi. Thank you for your um, input there. We'll definitely engage with you and uh, tell you all about what we can do uh, for for your for your situation. The inquiry at streamanalytics.com ID is where you would definitely uh, send your uh, send your queries to. You can go to streamanalytics.com. There's a variety of different ways you can engage with us, um, and we'll we'll be quick to to respond. Now. Uh, the other interesting piece here is we have a strong services team. So if there is anything that you need to do on this platform to, to build a custom application on top of custom integration with some, some particular piece of your environment, we can do that. Just like how I mentioned, Puneet and his team are now working with a number of customers that are, that are delighted and surprised in how fast they can get productive with this platform. So um, that's the other piece that you need to know. Um, impetus services team professional services team and, and this product together is a very powerful combination to accelerate your journey into real-time streaming analytics. So with that, we are coming to a conclusion of this webinar. Thank you very, very much uh, to spend your time with us and definitely send us your questions, send us your requests. You can start an on-premise or a cloud-based trial of stream analytics and start your POC as soon as you as soon as next week. Uh, the next major conference we're going to be at is the Strata Conference in Santa Clara, uh, coming up in the early part of next year. So thank you all again, and wish you a great holiday season.